they've got to lead the charge. And Elijah Hart was in our Sooner starting five presented by Flogistics. The same starting five for every game this season for Coach Porter Moser. We'll see if Oklahoma can get leading scorer Tanner Groves going. He's been in single digits in each of the last two games. And for Mike White, the seventh year head coach of the Florida Gators, it's an experienced lineup. Four seniors and a graduate transfer. You're looking at the key ingredient there, jumping center, big Colin Castleton, who wins the opening tap, and the Gators will get the first look at it. Well, Mike White has an excellent ball club, and it's amazing how quickly these guys have gelled together. Mm -hmm. Top seven players are all transfers either from last year or this season. Transfer is going to be a consistent theme when we talk about these players tonight. Shot clock is at eight. Castleton bangs into Tanner Groves. Hill provides a double team and a steal. Jordan Goldwire speeds the other way. His floater is good. We well, saw on that defensive possession, Chad, for Oklahoma, the hard double team on Castleton. Mm. Expect to see that consistently to see how he handles it. So Jordan, far, so good for Oklahoma. Jordan Goldwire was excellent in Oklahoma's win at UCF. Seven assists and just one turnover in 34 minutes against the full court pressing defense. That ball is batted off of Brandon McKissick and out of bounds. Another Oklahoma good defensive set. Now here's the previous possession right here. And as Castleton gets himself worked to the block, in comes Jalen Hill. It's a hard double team. No Florida Gator on that side of the floor to relieve him offensively, and Oklahoma turns it into points. And there's some energy in this building tonight from the crowd. You can sense it. Goldwire, Tanner Groves, a ball fake, and a lay in. 4 nothing Sooners. Well, Oklahoma would like to get Groves involved every night. Chad, only 14 points combined in the last two games against Houston Baptist and Central Florida. They've they got to get him more looks, so that's a good start. This is Appleby. Crossover dribble and a step back three. No. Castleton tips the rebound and then picks it up. And a quick three by McKissick is no good. Rebounded by Emoja Gibson. Emoja Gibson leading three-point shooter on this Sooner basketball team. This is Hill. Guarded tightly by Anthony DeRouge. He goes past him and dunks it home. 6 nothing Sooners. And a timeout taken here by Mike White and the Gators. It teaches us to think, to play nicely with the guts. Well, it was a quick timeout. Florida has turned the ball over. They just did for the third time in three possessions. And Oklahoma counters with Tanner Groves up and under. He got it. And a foul on Colin Castleton. Well, here you go. 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure, which Florida is doing a lot of thus far during this season, and that's what you do, Chad. You, you get behind that original pressure, then you have numbers. You attack down the gut, and as soon as the help came up the floor, Groves is wide open. So Tanner Groves converts the old-fashioned three-point plates. Nine-nothing Sooners, they have six points off of three quick turnovers by the Gators. And that is probably of the priorities to improve on. The biggest for Florida. There's another one. Arkless the takeaway. He gallops ahead. Arks that one over Castleton, and they say Castleton tipped it before it went over the backboard. So it'll stay on this end. 25 on the shot clock. Well, Castleton can really block shots. 2.8 per game leads the SEC. He had a pair of games last season where he blocked 14 total shots in two games. Well, his improvement as a player since he transferred from Michigan has been remarkable. His numbers up even more from last season. Funnel that inside to Jalen Hill, and he's called for traveling. Double dribble, beg your pardon, was the call. That's the first sooner turnover. Yeah, better help there defensively, but, you know, Florida, we talked about Oklahoma defensively. Florida's been really, really good, and Mike White loves the potential, continued potential, then defensively, as you see, first-year head coach Porter Moser. They want to extend you, Chad, but you're going to have to, ex if you're going to extend, you still have to keep guys in front. They have not been able to do that here in the early going against Oklahoma. 13 to shoot. Castleton squares up and fires, and Jalen Hill has the sooner rebound. 
Here comes Goldwire. Florida 0 for 3 from the floor so far tonight. And a substitution. You see the seventh year head coach, Mike White. They have won at least one game in four straight NCAA tournaments. What a job he has done. The Elite Eight in 2017 in the second round, three other times. Yeah, one of the great young coaches in all the country. And I, I had the opportunity to meet him when he was at Louisiana Tech. And, and I knew uh, he was going to go to a high level program and produce what you want, Chad. This can be consistently good, no matter your personnel, and he's done that. Tanner Grove's shot is wiped away by Castleton, and here come the Gators. This is Appleby, his pass stolen by Elijah Harkless. That is five Florida turnovers. Omoja Gibson, after a blow by, missed the three. And Castleton has the rebound. Gators are scoreless. Nearly four minutes into this one. This is Flandris Fleming Jr. who checked in during the stoppage a moment ago. Amoja Gibson reached in and grabbed him on the way up. That'll be the first Sooner foul. And a pair of free throws for the graduate transfer from Charleston Southern, Flandris Fleming Jr. Oh, this right there, he just willed his way to the basket. Obviously, you could see the size and strength advantage he had over Gibson. And, and Fleming has been a great addition two-time defensive player of the year in the Big South. So he's a two-way player. Huge in the win against Ohio State. 19 points when McKissick tweaked that hamstring. He had to play heavier minutes, and he was outstanding in that victory over the Buckeyes. So the first Florida points come three minutes and 50 seconds in, and there's a steal by Fleming. The toss to DeRuji, who slams it home. Four quick Gator points. Goldwire needs a little help to try to break down the press. Well, I don't think with any question that if this game is fast, it's going to favor Florida. And Oklahoma will be opportunistic in transition, but if they don't get anything, you know, they'll work clock and move the ball offensively. Harkless with five to shoot. Has to get one off against Appleby. Rises and fires and hits a three at the shot clock horn. This place is buzzing. Sooners by eight, nearly five minutes in. What a shot by Elijah Harkless. Yeah, defense was really good, actually, by Appleby. That just was a heck of a shot by Harkless. And Goldwire steals it. Appleby trails him. Goldwire to lay it in. Well, one of the things Porter Moser talked to his team about coming to this game was to match the toughness and physical nature of Florida at both ends, and they have certainly done that here in the beginning of this ballgame. Appleby with Harkless rising at him. No. Long hit ahead. Harkless runs the floor. Reverse layup. No. Castleton impacted that look. Here comes Myron Jones. Nice job of Castleton running the floor and not bodying up with Harkless. An air ball into the arms of Castleton. That was almost like a pass to the big fella. He'll go to the foul line for a three-point opportunity. Colin Castleton is on the board. Oklahoma running. Future pros at Michigan and just kind of buried. Decided he wanted to go back closer to home. And man, has it paid off for him and the Gators. The Florida State win, he had 15 points, 16 rebounds, and five blocks. First Gator with a 15-15-5 game since Joachim Noah. And those are some of the glory days. See John Cortez spinning to the bucket. He checks in, but didn't quite finish. Flanders Fleming the other way. Running trying to back down Jalen Hill. Arcs one up over and in. Again, that's just recognition by Florida right there. Fleming, we saw him do it earlier to Gibson. They just spaced right there and let him go to work. Jacob Groves has also checked in for Oklahoma. His shot blocked by Castleton, his second block. Here comes McKissick. McKissick's been battling a hamstring injury, but cleared and good to go tonight. Suffered a little strain against Ohio State. Jones for three. A high arcer, no good. And the rebound to Jacob Groves. Chad, both these teams 
basically are going to play seven or eight guys. And we mentioned Florida being older and more experienced. And their bench right now is better than Oklahoma's. It's important that Groves, you see him right there, and Cortez, who have come off the bench in this game. There cannot be any drop-off in decision-making and in aggressiveness in terms of defensively. Castleton against Ethan Shagwa. And they will whistle Shagwa for knocking Castleton over. I think he got a little off balance. And it didn't take much to knock the big man off his feet. And he is a big man. You and I got a chance to visit with him a little bit earlier today. Colin Castleton. He's going to go to the bench now. Deruji is back in. And we see the first appearance of C.J. Felder. Felder's only 6'7". He's got a 7'1 wingspan, though. Yeah, it, it, that's a high-level athlete right, right there in Felder. And Coach White gets Castleton a little rest. You got the under 12 coming up, which will extend that time to get him a blow over there. Kiss it, cut off by Shagwa into Deruji, who comes up with it out of the scramble. Missed it. And Jacob Groves has the rebound. The Sooners made six of their first eight field goals. They've missed their last four. Extra pass, deep corner, C.J. Nolan. And Tyree Appleby got discarded under the bucket. There will be a foul against the Sooners. They get that on Jacob Groves, that'll be his first. And that's four fouls against Oklahoma here in this opening half. Feels like Florida has settled in, as you might imagine. And what Mike White has done with these transfers, it's transfers who were very high-level players in programs that weren't super successful. Now they've found some success, and they're kind of feeding off of it, Brendan. Yeah, and, and the guys that have come in, uh, you know, an opportunity to play at the highest level of college basketball, you know, for, for a good coach and a great program. That'll be an offensive foul as Jacob Groves takes the hit on McKissick. You know, McKissick, one of those guys, Chad, but they're hungry. And the guys that have come in, McKissick, Fleming, and then Jones, those guys were all scorers also where they came from. And they can score here too, but they don't care about that as much. I mean, they collectively just want to go out and make the right plays, play together. And that's why they're off to a great start. I mean, this team has really meshed quickly with one another. That is seven Florida turnovers to this opening half. Oklahoma's missed its last five from the field. Goldwire, tough guarded three with Appleby right in his face. Here comes Fleming. And Coach Moser does not like that look right there. Now they need Goldwire to make a jumper or two a game to keep the defense honest, but that's after running offense. And somehow Fleming was able to wiggle around Harkless for the lay-in. He had 19 off the bench against Ohio State. Yeah, I was getting ready to say that. That kind of feels like that. I mean, he's giving them great energy, helped them get settled in, and, I mean, has willed his way to three buckets for the Gators. How about that win over Ohio State, which beat Duke last night? There's Harkless with the floater, trying to chase down his own miss. But out of the scramble, it was Deruji who came out for Florida. Appleby trapped over in that deep corner. And we hit a timeout. Sooners on top, 14 to 10, 11.06 to play, and a good one in the first half. The Lloyd Nope was able to convert into offensive transition points. They, they have nine points off the board as turnovers, but once the Gators started taking care of the basketball, it's changed the complexion of the team. It also has allowed them to get their half court man set up, and they've been much better defensively. There goes Deruji slashing in. He nearly threw it away. Flanders Fleming bails him out with 10 on the shot clock. Hill picks him up on a switch. Fleming rises and hits anyway. He's starting to feel it, isn't he? And here's the thing about this ball club. Right now it's Fleming, but it could be Jones and stretches. Appleby, obviously Castleton is a load for people to match up with. McKissick, they've got a lot of weapons that you cannot key on one guy. So once Oklahoma takes away Fleming, Look for other guys to step up and start making plays. So the Gators on an 8-0 run. The Sooners have missed their last seven, but that's a high percentage. Look for Jalen Hill. Well, like Florida, Oklahoma spaces and goes to some five-out 
motion as well. You could do that with Tanner Groves because he too is skilled out on the perimeter, and that was a great backdoor cut. Fleming again. <laughs> He's just feeling it all over the floor right now as Flanders Fleming. He's got 10. And what I love about it, he's doing it all inside the arc. I mean, he's getting to that paint area. 16-14, C.J. Nolan cuts through and gets a lay-in. A great job of Groves coming up the sideline to relieve the pressure. And then you get Nolan, the freshman, with an intelligent play away from the ball. Fleming is off the mark on a three ball, and then Tanner Groves chases it down. Sooner big men, good passers, Tanner Groves, Ethan Shagwar. We've seen some of that tonight. Mismatch here, Goldwire guarded by Castleton. That's Nolan along the baseline. Goldwire for three. It's been an improved part of his game this year, but not that time. Well, you see the skill right there with Castleton. There's, there's not very many bigs that can take it up under control that you trust, like we saw right there. Appleby off the mark, and another Tanner Groves rebound. Well, these games always settle in, don't they, Chad? A lot of emotion. Oklahoma came out, threw a couple punches, and as you knew they would, Florida has withstood that. It's a great crowd tonight at the Lloyd Noble Center, packed. Going to recognize Lon Kruger, some special tributes to him at halftime from some of his former players. Kick out three for Tanner Groves is good. Penetration from Goldwire, open look for the big fella. Yeah, you, you don't always have to turn the corner, but Goldwire just drugged the defense with him. And Groves does such a good job of making himself available and making the window of the pass a lot easier. Sooners double team Castleton and force a traveling violation. And against the Gators, that is eight turnovers. You know, in this game, Oklahoma's got to prepare, be prepared for full court pressure. Get the double team. Goldwire, a great job of keeping his dribble alive until he finds an open teammate. And there's the easy lay in. And here's that last possession. You see him drag Castleton down for fear that he might turn the corner. That creates the space. And the easy pass to the top of the key for growth. He's now 11 of 27 from three-point range this year. This guy can shoot it, Emoja Gibson, but he missed that one. Rebound. Originally, Felber got it. And then a foul against the Sooners. Jalen Hill will pick that one up. Hard to see it, but their arms are tangled. Jalen Hill caught with his hand in the cookie jar, so to speak. And that's his first. There is C.J. Felder on the receiving end, and he punches one home. Well, that's a great play right there. Just one four high, lifting those defenders. And Oklahoma falls asleep. There's a foul against Appleby, trying to pick the pocket of Elijah Harkless as we head to break. Sooners on top, 21-16. Gators some good. It's so difficult because there's no gimmies. So that's, when you talk about the grind of the Big 12, that's what we're talking about. So, Chad, if Iowa State is in the bottom third of this league, it'll, it'll once again be top two RPI in the country. And Florida right there in the mix. Number 14 this week. They're one of five ranked teams in the SEC. Kentucky is ninth. And the, and the depth of the SEC has developed over the last handful of years. I mean, it's always had great teams, but the back end hasn't been as tough. And, and that gap is closing. That's the third sooner turnover. Shot clock violation there as Felder got a piece of Goldwire's last second three-point attempt. And I think as this game has settled in, Chad, you're starting to see how good Florida is defensively. Will it extend you out? Take that three away. There's Castleton with a jump hook, a great fake over one shoulder, and the bank shot. Three-point game. You know, no double team right there. And if you don't double Castleton, and he's one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to convert every time. That was a quick shot from Goldwire. Porter Moser's going to get him out here in just a moment. 
And Castleton back to work against Tanner Groves. Jump hook over the left shoulder yeah. and a friendly roll. We have a one-point game, and Porter Moser takes a sooner timeout. This is a quick 6-0 Florida. Recognizes matchup opportunities, whatever they are. It was Fleming earlier, now it's Castleton. So B. John Cortez is in at the point guard spot, replacing Goldwire. And Cortez has called for an offensive foul. Appleby bought that one, didn't he? That's the first on Cortez. And we'll look again. Well, didn't he? It was tough to tell that angle right there. But there definitely was some acting involved. <laughs> Nickel Dimer, as you would say. Castleton a three. Way off. Into the arms of Groves. He is 0 for 3 from three-point range this season. And that's going to be against Appleby. Trying to duplicate the call he got just a moment ago. Feel a little intensity in the building tonight. Yeah, that's Doug Sermons right there. What's the saying? Fool me once? <laughs> Shame on me. Shame on you. So one foul each way, and here we go. Same two. Cortez needs some help. And an important stretch right here for Oklahoma because you have three bench players in the ball game with Hill and Gibson. There goes Hill climbing to the bucket for the deuce. That breaks a 6-0 Florida run. And that's what you need in Hill and Gibson to initiate and be aggressive offensively. Hill, hey, Hill's a guy that's shooting 71% from the floor. And they would like for him to continue to be aggressive like that. Oklahoma's largest lead was once 10. It had shrunk to one before that bucket by Jalen Hill. Now it's Felder going to work. And the defense produces yet another steal. That's nine Florida turnovers. Omoja Gibson a blow by. Drew some contact from Felder. And it'll be a pair of free throws for Omoja Gibson. Chad, here's Hill right there in the last possession. And skilled. And he's 6'7 legit. He's got a big frame, but tremendous skill. Absorbs a little contact right there. And, and as we mentioned, you know, Porter Moser had four returners coming back, three that played any kind of meaningful minutes. Hill was one of those, you know, along with Gibson and Harkas. Those are three guys that have to continue to step up offensively for Oklahoma as the season progresses. And both of these coaches have done a magnificent job with the transfer portal. It's crazy. Florida brought in five transfers this season. Overall, on their 15-man roster, they had eight transfers to reshape their roster. And Porter Moser, as you said, when you count his son Jake, seven transfers this season and overall nine transfers on their roster. It's, it's the nature of it, right? I mean, it has become it, that. And so you have to adapt as coaches, and, and both these guys have wisely done that. Deruji backs down his shot over Shagwan. No. But they call a foul on Shagwan. So you talk about all of the transfers and what they have done. Florida has gone out and gotten guys like Myron Jones and C.J. Felder, and they added McKissick and Fleming as well. High-level players at smaller levels. Oklahoma did somewhat similar things with the Groves brothers, Jacob and Tanner Groves, Ethan Shagwa, the guy who has come in as well. And they're asked both coaches, what's the secret to navigating the transfer portal and Porter Moser said I think we're still completely finding that out working our way through it and the word that Mike White used to describe it he said synergy you've got to have that and you got to study up on some of these guys before you bring them in so Deruji at the foul line Sooner's going to get Goldwire back in just wanted to get him over there calm him down and make sure he's making proper decisions with Goldwire yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the, I think, the great things about Porter Moser, it doesn't matter if you're a fifth-year senior who transferred from Duke or you're one of the three freshmen that sees time for his Sooners this season. I mean, he, he's going to teach and coach 
And Goldwire, as we mentioned, was outstanding in the win at Central Florida. His game management was terrific. It has to be terrific tonight, too. Omoja Gibson, his first three of the night. He's gotten so good at the fake sidestep knockdown of three. Well, he's got a quick release, and he's smart about being able to create space even though he doesn't have great size. Fleming's got a dozen off of Mike White's bench. At 19 in that win over Ohio State. Goldwire lost it on the way up, and it results in a lay-in by McKissick. There's that full-court pressure. Oklahoma has turned it over five times. Florida nine in the opening half. Gibson, ball fake. That pull up, that was beautiful. Emoja Gibson showing the mid-range you know, game. You know, you hear the term run a guy off the three-point line. I've never really liked that because if you have a guy like Gibson that can make those type of plays, you're giving him an even better look. Really, Chad, to defend the three, which Florida has done a great job so far this year, you got to be there on the catch. There's Gibson with a blow by. He scored seven straight sooner points. Gibson. McKissick forced that one up and got a friendly twist through the net. That quiets the crowd a bit. Well, this veteran team has come back with answer buckets in the last handful of possessions, right? When the crowd here in Norman gets juiced up, those guys go down and make a play. McKissick, the UMKC transfer, he played against Porter Moser's Loyola Chicago teams in the Missouri Valley Conference. And a foul off the ball will be against Daruji. Well, Chad, one of the things we were told prior to this year was the improvement in Gibson's locker room in a four-point game. Well, both coaches would keep it simple. If we would ask them at this moment, I, I think it's first and foremost the defensive end of the floor and then how you take care of the basketball. I think Jalen Hill stepped across the sideline, inbounding, and the Sooners have turned it over for the sixth time in the half. When a Florida has turned teams over, Chad, I mean, Florida State 17 times, Cal 18, Ohio State 18, Troy 21. It's going to be a foul from behind against Shagwaw. And the Sooners are over the limit. It will be the one-and-one one here for Colin Castleton. And that is three fouls on Ethan Shagwa in this first half. Oh, yeah, boy, that, that may be a tough one right there. I didn't, I didn't see the contact. But nevertheless, that is, that is huge because Oklahoma... One, doesn't have a ton of depth. And two, particularly that four and five position. You take Shagwa out of there. Groves out. Now you're back to Oklahoma's original starting lineup, which for all intents and purposes is a small lineup with Jalen Hill at the four. You see Castleton putting together another one of those nights as he rims in both free throws. And the Sooner lead is 2, 31-29. Three minutes left in this first half. Elijah Harkless has returned for Oklahoma. Castleton tried to stay in front of Goldwire here, and off the ball, McKissick and Tanner Groves get locked up. It results in a foul on McKissick. That is six fouls against the Gators, so no Sooner free throws just yet. But it does result in McKissick leaving the lineup. Tanner Groves goes up high to reach that pass. Gibson tightly guarded by Appleby. Groves one on one with Castleton. Trying to bang his way in. Go over that right shoulder with the left hand. No, got his own miss. And the follow is good for Tanner Groves. <laughs> Those are two big bodies right there. Left alone inside. And you see the patience from Groves. Not getting sped up right there. Look at Fleming working his Man. way in for another bucket. <laughs> That's 14 for Fleming. 
mean, he's just so athletic, and he's great at getting downhill. I mean, all of his work has been inside the arc, and it's been a tough, difficult matchup for Oklahoma to defend. Now the 19 against Ohio State off the bench, then started with McKissick a little injured in the previous game. As Castleton converts, Deruji picks up the loose ball. Well, Chad, you, you brought it up with about three and a half left. You know, what's going to help one team separate or gain momentum one from another? It's defense and taking care of the ball. And Oklahoma has had a couple of careless turnovers, and it's allowed Florida to tie this thing back up. 33 apiece as Florida has made three straight. They've now forced seven Oklahoma turnovers. Minute 30 left in the half, only 10 to shoot, backdoor cut, gold wire from Tanner Groves. With great spacing, you see the skill of Groves to be able to pass. And, and Chad, when you cut back door, you want to bring your man high above the three-point line. That's exactly what Goldwire did. And Appleby trying to find Deruji on a backdoor cut. The Sooners kick it. Now here's a couple possessions here. Look at this. I mean, that's just pounding right there. And Groves goes right at him, which is exactly what you want to do. And because Castleton is buried underneath the basket, he's able to get his miss. Here's the back door. Goldwire brings it high. That allows tons of space for Groves to hit him. Forming well, a Castleton trying to work a pick and roll. And a drawn three-point foul. As Appleby goes up for that shot, Goldwire got him, and three free throws for Tyree Appleby. Yeah, that's a bad foul right there. I mean, you want to contest. And Goldwire was in good position. But you don't want to bail out a jump shooter. Tyree Appleby, we told you the big win that... The Gators had over Ohio State. That was on a 30-footer in the Fort Myers championship game. Tyree Appleby hitting that one to win it. He had a root canal surgery last week, so he's playing with tooth pain. He was a real pain for Ohio State. <laughs> and Ohio State came back to beat Duke last night. So if you do, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, that means Florida's capable of being the number one team in the country, right? So did I hear over here you talking to Colin Castleton and, and gave him that breakdown and analogy? Yeah, he said, he sure, yeah, whatever. He, <laughs> he said, well, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. Appleby's second one drops through. The first lead of the night for Florida comes with a minute and two seconds left in the opening half. And momentum shifting right allows them to set up the full court pressure on the made free throw. Barkless. Supers need a good look here. Where are they going to go? Gold wire to Tanner Groves. Left open for three. And Florida a chance to stretch the lead just a bit. Under 40 seconds left in the half. Castleton, the double team arrives, and Goldwire knocked that off of Castleton and out of bounds. Boy, well, great job of Goldwire digging down on the top of Castleton. And here is he turns his back to the defense. Goldwire recognized that, and here he comes. And Goldwire. So instrumental. He was just almost exhausted against Central Florida. Full court pressure, similar to this. He played 34 minutes in that Oklahoma win. And Emoji Gibson is fouled. And this team, this is a, a veteran group. They played other places for Porter Moser's team, but they enjoyed that win at UCF. They understand the value of a road win, a potential quad one win, as you try to make the NCAA tournament, and that's a huge part of the evaluation process. There will not be many quad one road wins because teams don't play games like that. Yeah, particularly in November, right? You know, it, and I remember as a player, I, I don't think there was anything more gratifying than winning on the road against great competition, the highest level of competition. And we talked about this earlier in the game, Chad. Typically how that is done is that you defend well and you guard with great intensity. Oklahoma did that. And Porter Moser, at times this year, been a little bit concerned about decision-making, particularly from the guard group. 
that was a little bit better down the stretch. And, and they didn't shoot it great, but yet was still able to win. And that, that unites you, brings you together, and hopefully we'll get Oklahoma to continue to buy into the defensive end of the floor. So the Sooners back on top on the pair of Emoja Gibson free throws. He now has 10 points. Shot clock is off to close out this opening half. It's been a good one. The crowd is into it. Two high-level teams, and the game has dictated that. Tyree Appleby going to whittle time off the clock. It's under 10 now. Appleby, a three that was well guarded. Oklahoma may get a look. Emoja Gibson trying to free himself. Launches. Was there a foul call? No, there was not. And it's a missed shot of the buzzer. Emoja Gibson, 10 in the first half. The Sooners lead the run. And so you got to expect, I think offensively, that they'll execute better here the second half. And remember, in college basketball, you have your offense in front of your bench the second half. It's easier to communicate. Florida's got to continue to get downhill. First. Jordan Goldwire just blew right to the rim. He missed it, but a foul call. That is on DeRucci. That's two on DeRucci. Yeah, they call that foul on the floor. Sooners will inbound under the bucket. The Goldwire quick blow by, and Florida doesn't want DeRucci to fall into foul trouble. Well, I, I like Goldwire going to the rim. And if there's one thing that he and Harkless have really got to improve on or, or prioritize is getting to the foul line. So, so through seven games, your two lead guards who are physical combined, Chad, have only been to the free throw line 26 times. Aboja Gibson free for the three. No, Tanner Groves fouled on his way back up. How did Moja Gibson get so wide open? Yeah, there's one guy you do not want to lose on the perimeter for Oklahoma. It is Gibson. And then Groves there able to get that offensive rebound as the basketball came off the rim softly. Tanner Groves, last year's Big Sky Player of the Year. He and his brother Jacob transferring here to Norman. The foul was on Appleby. I think Oklahoma, Chad, tonight doing a much better job of getting Tanner Groves shots. He's not going to hunt shots. He, he can't really create them for himself. He's going to play within the offense, but they have to be cognizant of him and get him involved. They hadn't the previous two games. Tonight, much better. Oja Gibson finds Groves, and he lays it in. Case in point, right there. And then a steal and a foul under the bucket. Elijah Harkless getting in there. And the foul will be on Colin Castleton. Well, a similar feel to the beginning of the first half between the two teams. Where Oklahoma came out both ends, more energy, more focus. And that's just carelessness from Florida. And Elijah Harkless to the foul line. So Oklahoma scores the first four points here in the second half. Elijah Harkless, the game-winning shot against UCF scored nine points in that game so critical down the stretch it's both of these 10 of 16 at the foul line this season is Harkless and the Sooner lead is out to six Appleby trying to work his way free here's Deruji shot clock is down at 12 tries to back down Jalen Hill McKissick a three and it's good Kind of an odd developing player right there. That is Florida's first made three of the night. And that's good news for Florida friends because McKissick, a career 37% three-point shooter, but he has struggled so far with the Gators. Six of 26 coming in. But as we talked to the staff today, specifically I was talking to Eric Pastrana about him, and he said we know he's going to start making shots. I mean, he has a career where he has proven that he can do that. Castleton's third block shot there. Oklahoma goes to work, but only 10 on the shot clock now. Hill off a of Tanner Grove screen. Lost it on the way up, and they get Castleton. It'll be a pair of free throws, and that is the third foul on Castleton. 
watch this right here. Let's see if Castleton gets in. There's the reach. Yeah, absolutely. At first glance, I wasn't sure. But as Hill went up, Castleton's arm gets on the right arm of Jalen Hill. Jalen Hill, such a versatile player for Oklahoma, leading them in rebounding this year. You see what he's done so far. That's his seventh point. And so with Castleton out, Florida will go a little smaller. They'll enter Flandris Fleming into the game. What a first half he had offensively. Led everybody with 14 points. But now we'll see if Oklahoma takes advantage at all with Tanner Groves inside. One of two there for Jalen Hill. And just like when Tanner Groves is on the bench for Oklahoma, when Colin Castleton is on the bench for the Gators, I mean, the dynamics of the team at both ends of the floor drastically changes. This is Fleming working his way in on Hill. Daruji, jump stop. Nope, his follow shot is good, though. Boy, he's got some quick bounce, doesn't he? And that's what you want to do, much quicker than Groves. And even in that tight space, difficult for Groves to keep in front. Jalen Hill can't convert. There's Tanner Groves, and he'll go back to the free throw line. You remember the first half where Florida was getting extended and Oklahoma was able to get to the rim. It's just too easy. These are straight line drives. One, giving up the containment easily. And then two, rotation is slow. Communication slow to rotate over. And Tanner Groves misses that first free throw. That is the third foul on Daruji. So significant foul trouble inside for the Gators to start this second half. Daruji and Castleton each with three and over on Mike White's bench. And Mike White has basically gone with seven guys and their schedule's been tough. So he's had a hard time developing the bench deeper here early in the season. What a step around move that was by McKissick to get to the window. But with the personnel they have in their Chad spacing not allow them opportunities to drive to the rim. That's good offense right there. 43 apiece is our score. We have now had two ties on the night. Jordan Goldwire at the controls for Oklahoma. He's watched by Felder. Lost the ball as he was blowing past Felder and this, this, missed the mid-range jumper. Felder the post against Goldwire. This is McKissick. Groves blocked his shot. And with 15 to shoot, the Gators will inbound. Yeah, that's the previous possession offensively for Florida. Right there. Good job of drawing the defense, getting to the heart and the kick out, and then a poor closeout. The ability then for Florida to get to the cup. McKissick looks to show no ill effects from the hamstring strain he suffered against Ohio State. Elijah Harkless had that picked by McKissick. And here comes Fleming. Fleming head down. Out to Jones. His three ball is no good. Emoji Gibson with the Oklahoma rebound. Now that's a good three right there, Chuck, because you have a broken four. I thought in the first half of the nine threes Florida took, a lot of them were under duress. And Mike White, they've had games where they've taken 37 threes and games they've taken 14. He just wants them to take good threes. And there's an offensive foul off the ball. We talked about Oklahoma trying to get it to Tanner Groves. He was a little over-aggressive trying to get position. And he has committed the foul. That's his first. He can come over from left block to right. You know, there's no question right there. The silly foul. So he checks out. Ethan Shagwa is back in. Remember, Shagwa has three fouls for Oklahoma. Bijan Cortez, C.J. Nolan also in for the Sooners. That'll be a push, and that's four. Nope, beg your pardon. They get Emoji Gibson rather than Shagwa. So that's two on Gibson. The referees 
Patrick Adams, Jeff Hartney, Doug Sermons tightening this thing up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and we talked about this feeling like a conference game. And the conference games obviously are physical. Both teams imposing their will on one another. It's going to be a conference game <laughs> in the not too distant future. Free along the baseline is McKissick, and Florida is back on top by a deuce. Great cut right there. Again, Florida has been best when they're going downhill first. Six nothing run by the Gators. Cortez a kick out. Gibson's three is good, and Oklahoma's back on top. Ball movement by the Sooners. Yeah, great job of Cortez making that extra pass quickly to Gibson in the corner. McKissick a kick out for Jones. And Bijan Cortez with a good box out. Sooners have three on two. Cortez trying to lob it up for Hill. Oh, Gibson was open briefly. He'll step back. That's a two, and he drilled it. Emoja starting to heat up a little bit. Will be sliding back door. Here's Jones to the bucket. Back and forth we go in a one point game. I'll tell you what, every time this crowd has gotten into it, after a couple of plays in a row from Oklahoma, two from Gibson, Florida's come back and answered. Veteran team. Jalen Hill has stepped through and a bucket. Using his size to post up inside. Got a timeout here by Mike White and the Gators. Jalen has eight to ten minutes with those two guys over on the bench. Yeah, and, and because he plays seven, essentially, you know, he's going to feel his way through that. Time and score, certainly. But no matter when either one of those guys get back in the ballgame, you know, they, they've got to be smart and not pick up anything cheap early and play good position defensive basketball. Felder finds a wide open McKissick and an air ball. Shot clock did not reset. It's at five. Myron Jones, that's a two. Rebound McKissick. And finally picked up by Jacob Groves. Well, a lot of opportunities right there for Florida. Not able to convert. Elijah Harkless lost that on the baseline. Bodies tumbling to the floor. Shagwa has it for the Sooners. And finally, we will have a held ball. Patrick Adams steps in there, unsorts things. And the possession arrow heads the other way. We've got a good one. Sooners by three with third. Oklahoma's only made three. But this is a, a team at times... In the first few games that settled for the three too much and so i think porter moses got to like that they're working inside out and, and not settling part of that is florida does a good job of running you off the line but obviously oklahoma has run pretty good half court offense not needing to make a bunch of three-point shots sooners come up with a steal felder was trying to hit fleming on a back cut Mochi Gibson, ball fake, wiggles his way to the bucket, and is rebounded by C.J. Felder. Harkless knocks that away from Appleby. The shot clock plays down to 10. Appleby stripped by Shagwa. Elijah Harkless with a handoff to Jacob Groves. Call for traveling. Feet got tangled up in there with Appleby, who was defending him. So both these teams are guilty of this. Is the lack of ball movement it has not been crisp. Part of it is both teams defend at a pretty high level. I mean, it's it's their M.O. But notice, I mean, they're, they're trying to attack without moving the basketball. When you have a bunch of very good on-ball defenders and Oklahoma does you're not going to get anything without some movement bodies moving the ball moving 
Jones off the screen, drills the three, and we're tied at 50. Myron Jones from downtown. Yeah, very good three-point shooter. And in their last game, hit four against Troy. Right there, just too much space coming off that ball screen from Castleton. There goes Shagwa. He got stripped as Fleming got a hand in to knock it away. Fleming counters with a three the other way. And he rebounds his own miss. This is Appleby. Castleton is back in with the three fouls, as you see. And that ball's out of bounds. We'll stay on this end with the Gators. We get another timeout. So Colin Castleton, the big fella, back in with three fouls for the Gators. 11.47 to play in a tight one. Carolina, you got Davion Harmon, and somehow they were able to reshape this roster, as was Mike White. I mean, they lose Noah Locke to a transfer. Trey Mann, Trey Mann. started up the road for the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. Couldn't be at this game because he was starting for the Thunder. And then you got Scotty Lewis, who's with Charlotte in the NBA. I mean, there were major departures for both of these teams, but these head coaches have reshaped shape these rosters to play at a level like this yeah and, and to do it so quickly where there's synergy um, guys that get along you know, this Florida team these are a bunch of really good dudes and that's why in the long term uh, you, you feel about feel good about them as well because there's going to be adversity that hits you're going to go in conference you're going to lose three or four lose two in a row but this is the type of team that be, will be able to withstand that because they don't care who gets the credit. They just want to win games. So Castleton sat for about six and a half minutes back in and in the scoring column as Florida is back on top. Jalen Hill attacks. Tanner Groves. Hill kind of shielded him from Castleton, and Castleton's got three fouls. Well, and Cass yes, and Castleton could not converge back and contest because he wants to stay away from that four. Now, on this end, we saw it the last possession. You have to run it through Castleton in the half court every time. Fleming and Castleton, mid-post action against Tanner Groves. Rebound volleyballs to Jacob Groves. I'd like to see them get Castleton on the block with a shooter and just little two-man game. Invite that double team, Sergeant. Yeah, Tanner Groves can sense that Castleton's aggression has to be less right now, isn't he? He's sensing it. Sooners back up at Deuce. And Tanner Groves has 17 now. Fleming trying to force his way in. He scored a dozen in the first half, only two in half number two. But he looks determined to force that to change. Now he's, he's constantly looking to attack, and, and Jacob Rose, over time, he's going to have to learn how to be able to keep guys in front better, use his size, create a cushion, and that's exactly what Porter Moser is telling him right there. I mean, you can live with Fleming shooting a jumper, but don't give him an angle. Castleton lost it, got it back, bangs his way into Groves and misses the jump hook. Harkless had the baseline open. Emoja Gibson blow by. Castleton impacted that one. And the Gators have numbers with Fleming. McKissick twists in. Deruji's three. Into the hands of Castleton. And he thought a teammate who was on the bench was an open player. He passed to an open player. Unfortunately, he was out of bounds. Well, the last two possessions, Castleton has uncharacteristically gotten sped up. Remember that the previous possession, he got the ball deep. He had isolation with Tanner Groves, and I, I thought he could have let it, the play more slowly develop. And then they're right there. Those guards have got to communicate with him and, and go help and be an outlet. You know, it is a, an interesting dynamic. In the second half, you go toward your bench on that end of the floor, and you want your players to stand up and support their teammates. Castleton just thought one of his teammates was open over there. Jordan Goldwire was open, and Fleming has the rebound. Harkless staying in front of Fleming, edges his way up that right side. That was a hard post, and Harkless is called for a foul. 
Well, the crowd does not like it, but I, I, this is the correct call. I, I think you'll see Harkless body up. But sometimes guys, Chad, think they're going straight up and down. I mean, it's it's floor to ceiling. You're gonna get a look right here. Maybe so yeah, just well, reached a little bit. So, but when Fleming leaves his feet and his hips go towards him, that's a foul. So that's a good call. So Fleming back to the free throw line. Told you had a dozen points in the first half. Only two points in half number two. This is his second trip to the foul line tonight. And he hits that one. One point game, 54-53. Fleming, the two-time defensive player of the year in the Big South Conference at Charleston Southern before transferring here. He's not just a defensive player. He can score it a yeah, little bit, too. Two-way guy. His 16 points tonight, Chad, are in just nine field goal attempts. I mean, that's, that's efficient. And he's only taken the one three. and that, That's the only bad shot that he's taken. Here's Goldwire. Shaqua wide open for the two-handed flush. Appleby had that poked away by Goldwire. But it rockets right out to Myron Jones. Fleming working against the freshman C.J. Nolan now. Fall away, no. And Shaqwa the rebound. C.J. Nolan finds a seam, attacks it, and scores it. The freshman off Porter Moser's bench going right at the big man, Castleton. Well, again, Florida can't, without any movement, just try to back in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is sitting down and just dribble containment. Florida's missed its last four. A three-and-a-half-minute scoreless drought. Three on the shot clock. Tough shot. Appleby off the mark. Elijah Harkless trying to sprint to the rim. And that'll be a block against Myron Jones as we go to break. Inside four or five minutes, and you have to have closers and most of the time, it's a guy getting downhill, and getting to the rim himself, creating help, getting to the paint. And really for Oklahoma, that guy is Jordan Goldwire, which he has that ability. But I think sometimes he shies away from the contact. And I'd like to see him get to the foul line. Harkless off the mark with that. Castleton up high to secure his eighth rebound of the night. Appleby on the attack, misses the runner. He had Jalen Hill in his hip pocket. Sooners will settle in. Seven minutes to go and a four-point lead. You can hear a pin drop in this place right now. C.J. Nolan. Shagwa swats that out as the Sooners get a reset. Yeah, I think it's a wise move by Goldwire not to force the issue, put Florida back on defense. Goldwire attacks up and over and in for Jordan Goldwire. <laughs> Oklahoma leads the 14th ranked team in the country by six with 6.20 to play. And I was going to say a moment ago, I think when Shagwa swatted that ball back out front, he might have gotten a piece of Anthony DeRuji. And DeRuji's got some blood coming from his nose, it appears, Brendan. And substitution. Let me check the really tough guy, 50 year player, can make the highlight real play. He's playing with three fouls right now, and they will attend to the blood that's trickling from his nose. Yeah, that's, that's a high level athlete that's got a tremendous motor in Deruji. Had 15 points, seven rebounds in the win over Florida State. Mike White coached his brother at Louisiana Tech. 
And Anthony transferred from Louisiana Tech, where he was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year in 2018. Porter Moser's up, encouraging the crowd at the Lloyd Noble Center. And Goldwire went up and blocked the shot. But Appleby will go to the foul line. There's still not much movement, but that's better offense because you get Castleton involved. And here he is coming off that ball screen right there. And no doubter, Goldwire bodies up. And Appleby will keep coming at you. And that's, a, that's a competitor right there. Saw him get downhill a possession ago and, and miss because he had Hill behind him. But, but I like him trying to get to the rim. Appleby, the transfer from Cleveland State, spent two years there, and he had to do it the old-fashioned way. He had to sit out a year transferring to Florida. <laughs> In fact, there are a couple of guys on the roster. Deruji had to do that as well. Old-school transfer. But he was a scorer who's had to learn how to distribute a little more since he got the gains. Yeah, because he's really more natural, what you would call a combo. But he's had to shoulder a lot of the point guard duties. He, and he continues to improve on his decision making. Four points sooner lead, six minutes left. Goldwire on the attack against Appleby. Had it poked away by Fleming. Loose ball. And Jalen Hill got tied up. The possession arrow stays on this end, though, with the suitors. I'll tell you what, Goldwire got away with one there. You never want to make a bounce pass of any kind up the floor. It's a slow pass as it checks up, as it hits the deck, and Florida just about took it. 11 on the shot clock. Tanner Groves, an open three. Good. He said, why not? They didn't close out. Well, I think he was surprised. I thought he was going to pass it up. And a Sooner steal as Emoja Gibson comes out of the pack with it. Sooners' largest lead has been 10, currently 7. Jalen Hill with a thunderous dunk. seam and a large slant. Oklahoma and Florida quite honestly has just pounded the air out of the basketball here the second half. Where do the Gators go? Fleming's had a great night lobbing it for Castleton and kind of had his legs swept out from underneath him by Jalen Hill with a bump underneath. I like that right there. I mean, if, if I'm Mike White, and obviously that was set up coming out of that timeout, I, I am getting Castleton involved because of all the guys on the floor for Florida, when he has it in his hands or he's setting that ball screen, just mentally for Oklahoma, he's putting a lot of pressure on that defense. So Castleton had 10 points in the first half. He picked up his third foul at the 18-29 mark. He has two points in this second half. Some critical free throws right now for the Gators with five minutes left. And the front end of the one-and-one one drops for the big man. Let's go. Again, Florida does not have a field goal in the last six and a half minutes. Trying to hang in it from the foul line right now. Yeah, and in that stretch, 0 of 6 from the floor. And if you extend that a little further, one of nine, one of their last nine from the floor. Oklahoma's made it tough to get good looks. Now the full court Florida defense as Deruji replaces Castleton after the free throws. They're both playing with three fouls. Goldwire lets the shot clock play down to 10 and finds Harkless. Harkless splits a double team. That's a tough shot high off the window and in. Oklahoma continues to take advantage 
of how Florida is guarding. You know, on those, Chad, you have to guard straight up. The angles are coming too easy for Oklahoma to get downhill. Florida just 2 of 20 from three-point range tonight. But they get a reset here with Fleming. Shot clock is all the way down to 10 already. Here comes Fleming. Trying to work around Groves, and Groves may have reached in at the last minute. And he picks up the foul. That is his third. I'll tell you what, that's pretty crafty by Fleming. You know, watch it right here. He goes downhill, and see, Groves quit moving his feet. And then he just bodies up. And that's smart, smart play by Fleming. Landers Fleming, first of two, plays off the back of the iron. Fleming's got 16, but only two in the second half. And he gets one of two. Sooner lead is eight with four minutes to play in this one. Both teams are in the bonus. Hill give and go with Groves and a whistle and a foul call. The part of Porter Moser as a coach on the offensive end, Chad, is to get high percentage shots. They've shot 50% or better, and five of your guy to be the alpha and, and be a closer. Listen, Oklahoma, the way that they have shot the basketball, the ball movement, efficiency, that's a hallmark of Porter Moser teams. They are third in the Big 12 in field goal percentage for the season. They shoot... Uh, over 50%, but from two-point range this year, Oklahoma is second in the country on just two-point shots. They shoot 52% from two-point range for the year. So Jalen Hill converts, and the Sooner lead is the largest it's been, 10. And that's a collective effort because they really don't have a go-to offensive guy. Big shot right there. That's a huge triple out of the corner for Tyree Appleby, who has the ability to get hot. Remember, he made a 30-footer to beat Ohio State in Fort Myers. That's big right there. Again, the confidence we talked about that Appleby has, fearlessness to go make a play. But only the third made three, and that was a scoring drought of seven minutes field goal-wise for the Gators. Lob into Jalen Hill, triple teamed, and Appleby comes out of the pack. Jones attacks. Inside, it is Deruji converting. Well, a great job of Florida having patience right there off the turnover. I don't know what Tanner Groves was doing. He threw it behind Hill. Five quick points for Florida. Five-point game with two and a half to play. And finally into the hands of Goldwire. Shot clock is under 10. Harkless. Steps back and a three. Barely hits the rim. It goes out of bounds off of whom? They say Castleton touched it last. Now the shot clock should reset, Brendan. I believe it's at one right now. Yeah. And they will reset it. Let's reset it to 20. That's a tough break because that came off in a weird spot. It came off hot. I mean, it, it was a great defensive stand. They get this quick little 5-0 run. And Oklahoma catches a break right there, quite honestly. There's Goldwire working with Groves. He was trying to go maybe behind the back to Groves there. And it's knocked out by the Gators. Yeah, good job of Castleton stretching out that play. 16 to shoot here for the Sooners and 2-12 left in the game. Quick cut, Harkless, but it's pinned from behind by Fleming. 
Volpe launching and wow. hitting another. <laughs> it's a two-point game. Seven straight. Make it eight straight for the Gators. And a Sooner timeout. Defense to yes, Mike White's team able to go down, score in transition. Poor offensive possession by Oklahoma. Then you get the block. So, you know, Oklahoma gives them the momentum by not taking care of it, right? I mean, that's those are magnified here late in ball games. Sooners break the pressure this time and go to work with 20 on the shot clock for Goldwire. Two-point Oklahoma lead. It was 10 points two minutes ago. Backdoor cut. Hill up strong. Bucket. And he'll go to the foul line. Jalen Hill's been a big difference maker getting to the rim late in this game. And he's a strong young man, Chad, so he can absorb. Come. Look at the space, and you have Groves and Hill up high. Everybody's above the three-point line. That's just a cut to the basket, a rejection of the screen, a slip, if you will. And Hill's versatility, able to catch, finish. 16 for Jalen Hill. And the Sooner lead is five. That three ball misses out of the corner from Fleming. Now Oklahoma can run some time off with a minute 15 left. Elijah Harkless and Gibson. Gibson had that blocked. Out of bounds from behind again by Fleming. Yeah, and Porter Moser, you can see him. He's getting on to Gibson. I mean, you, you don't need that. It's a two-possession game. I don't know what he left with. About 18 seconds on the shot clock. You know, that little guy going amongst the trees. You want to run it down, get it into Goldwire's hands late. We approach a minute left. Goldwire to the bucket, but he short-armed it and missed it. 72-67 Sooners with less than a minute to play. Fleming backing down Harkless. Steps around with the left hand and Tanner Groves rebounds. Sooners a very good foul shooting team. And Florida's in a position where they may have to commit one. It's a two-possession game and Florida now does foul. They foul Harkless. So Elijah Harkless will go to the foul line. That is four fouls on Myron Jones. Still the one and one here for Harkless. Well, the name of the game here is, is obviously going to have opportunities at the line, and you got to take care of it. And when you do those two things, the final 33 seconds, if you're Oklahoma, you get out of here with the win. Harkless, front end and away on the front end of one and one. Got to get downhill, Chad, right here. They lob it into Castleton, but a turnover. Harkless with a run out, somehow tracks it down and saves it to Hill. Florida has to foul, and they will. I believe that will be four on Deruji. And the Sooners are in the double bonus now. So it'll be two free throws. Yeah, we, we talked about Goldwire for Oklahoma coming out of that under four-minute timeout, about being a closer in the decision-making. And Appleby has made some huge shots, but that was very poorly managed half-court possession. You, you get something there, you make it a possession game. Careless with the basketball, and, and you turn it over. You, obviously, you, you can't have that happen late in a game like this. It's a career-high 17 tonight for Jalen Hill. And Tanner Groves checks out for C.J. Nolan. Nolan coming in, a strong, physical-type defender. 18 seconds left. What a win this could be for Oklahoma against the number 14 team in the country. It's a big one. That makes it a three-possession game with 18 seconds left. 
And Oklahoma will pick up full here. Just keep in front and do not foul. Fall away three by Appleby is an air ball and out of bounds. And under 10 seconds left in this one. Tough shots, but that's all that's been available against Porter Moser's Sooner defense tonight. And Oklahoma on the verge of a big one. Tanner Groves is back in. And Florida will not foul. And Oklahoma's going to get a huge home win. Handshake between Porter Moser and Mike White. It's a final. Oklahoma has defeated the number 14 team.